So now we want to view our asset in Marmoset. Make sure that you've exported your head as an OBJ and any other asset that's associated with it. So for me, it's head, hair, eyeballs, scarf to go around the guy's neck. So inside of Marmoset, when you first load it up, you're going to have this garage scene. There's no assets in here. I can hold down my Alt key, left mouse click, and move around in here. Adding an asset, you just go to your Add menu, select your mesh, go to your files. So I have my head, and I'm going to bring that in. So I have this head in here. So now you can kind of see what this guy looks like in Marmoset with no textures and just a default shader. So just to add the rest of the assets, it's just the same process. Just go to each one, import, and scarf. So now I have all my assets in here. To my left is sort of like Maya's outliner. So I have my top node, I have my mesh. You can minimize these. If you want, you can turn off the little eye icon, similar to ZBrush, so that you can turn that off and you can focus on, you know, if I'm working on the eyes, I can just focus on getting my eye material set up so that they look nice. So now there's only one material in here. I can duplicate this guy. If I want to create a new material, I can click on new and it'll create a new material. And I want to create one more. So I've got four objects, so I have four materials. Next, we want to name it. To name it, you just double click on the default. Call this head. So now I've got four materials. I've got my four objects. Materials are named, but nothing is assigned to my material. So how I assign my material, I select my head, make sure that my head material is assigned, and click apply. So now my head is assigned to that. Now, this material is assigned to everything, but once we start breaking this off and start assigning all these materials, everything will be assigned to their own material. So now if I adjust my specularity or my gloss on my scarf, you can see that's the only thing being affected. So now we have our objects. We have our materials and everything is assigned. A little bit to go over on this side, we have our sky. So if you select that, this is going to be my garage. This is the actual image that is lighting the scene right now. If you want to create lights in your scene, you can do it by two methods. You can create a light by going to add and creating a light here. You can grab your manipulator and you can just simply move it around in here. You can turn on cast shadows. You can change it to either a point light, spotlight, or directional. If I want to, I can rename it. If I want to delete it, just select it and press delete. The second method to adding lights in one I like to use is just simply clicking on your light editor. You're going to create a light and it's actually going to create a skylight. So you can move it around. It's actually going to pick up colors from the surrounding image. So if I'm over this red, you can see that it's picking up red. I go to this side, it's going to pick up that bright light from that door. You can also rotate your background image so that you can adjust your lighting that way as well. So if we want this guy, his right side facing that bright door, you just rotate your image so that this is on this side. And also this light is still on that side. So you're getting double light on that side. You can move this light back over to here. So now I'm picking up a cooler light on this side. If I want to adjust the intensity, your light will be under your sky tab. Just select it and you have a brightness tab so you can really you know blow this guy out. Your radius is going to be like a volume so the larger your radius the larger the volume. So if I crank up this and if I drop my radius you can see how it's going to affect that. I usually don't fool with my attenuation too much unless I'm just trying to fine tune it a little bit. This guy size softness you know I just kind of use it to soften the light a little bit it becomes more diffused. Uh, if you have a spotlight you can change it right now it's a directional so I'd like to leave it as directional and if I go back I can create another light if I want. And same process, if I want to delete, it's just select the light and delete it. If you want to change your background image, you go to your presets. Then I'm going to be using the smashed windows. We just rotate, not brightness, rotate till we get a lighting similar to you know what I want to see here. So we'll go that way, we'll rotate his head. Once again, moving around is Alt, left click, right click, and you can zoom in. It's just like Maya. So if you're familiar with Maya, it's the same key functions. Okay. Now for rendering, we want to turn on ambient occlusion. This is going to be screen-based ambient occlusion, so you're actually going to be getting geo occluding itself. You can adjust the strength and you can adjust your size. I like to try to get an occlusion you know around the eyes and stuff so that it's actually creating a nice occlusion around eyes and other geo that's around the mesh like the scarf. I want to make sure that I'm getting a nice you know sort of shadow on that. You can turn on high resolution shadows. Also your resolution I like to keep this at one to one if you start if you go to double and you can really start to chug marmoset. So I like to keep it at one to one. The Anti-aliasing is set to four times. If you choose none, you're going to get a lot of, you know, like graininess in here. Once we apply an image or a texture, you'll notice it. You can see it down here in the neck area. I like to keep this at four times. Okay, you can add your watermark if you want. It pops down here in the corner. You can change your position. So if you want everyone to know that you rendered this guy a marmoset, you can put the little marmoset icon. You can change the size to two times, and you can position this however where you want it to go. And once you have a position, you can hide it in the viewport, but when you do your screen capture, it'll show up in your screen capture. You can display your wireframe here, and you can adjust how bright your wireframe is. 